Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to more Warhammer 40k lore. And today we're going to be talking about psychers, albeit a very, very different type of psychers. There already are basically as many different types of psychers as you can possibly imagine, with practically every single psyker having a slightly different variant on psychic powers. There may, for example, be two psychers that manifest balls of fiery doom, but one does so by taking all of the heat already existent in the air and drawing it into a fiery ball, whilst the other might ignite the oxygen in the air, whilst the third may draw the heat from his very own life essence, his soul, his connection to the warp and manifest it as fire. There are countless variations of psychic powers, and even those who appear at first glance to be similar are almost certainly quite different and unique. But the type of psychic power we're going to be talking about today is unique precisely because it is not unique. Its very uniqueness comes from its uniformity, and also from how exceedingly rare it is. For psychic blanks are, technically speaking, psychers, and yet all of them possess the exact same psychic power, albeit to varying degrees. Namely, the ability to dampen or outright neutralize psychic powers. And that really is as good a place to start as any, the differing degrees of power, because despite the uniformity of the nature of the power, the neutralization or dampening of other psychic powers, they do of course vary quite considerably in their potency, but by and large they can be divided into two categories, blanks and pariahs. Oh, and to hopefully avoid a bit of confusion in the future, blank is a colloquial term meant to refer to those with dampening or neutralizing psychic powers. And so I will probably use that as a generalistic term, but right now I'm using blank and pariah to refer to two different classifications of psychic nulls, voids, or untouchables. Beloved children are known by many names and so on. Which is ironic, because they are very rarely actually beloved. Let us start with a blank, shall we? In a blank, the gene that creates the neutralization or dampening of psychic powers is a latent one, to the degree that the person in possession of it may not even know that they are a psychic blank. And due to the gene in question being latent, it is also considerably less powerful than in a person in which it is a dominant gene, that being a pariah. In the case of a blank, they are able to dampen psychic powers to varying degrees. Some may be more or less powerful than others, and there may also be certain qualifiers, such as distance, for example. You could say that these psychic blanks have an area of effect, a aura around them, and the effect they have often increases the deeper inside of that aura the psychic or his psychic power travels. But this does not only affect psychers, it also affects regular human beings, although in a slightly different fashion. In the case of a psyker, they are going to have a very overt, visceral, and probably aggressive reaction to the presence of a psychic blank. They are going to dislike them instinctively. They are going to feel very clearly that there is something terribly wrong with the psychic blank, and they may also very well lash out in an aggressive manner due to said wrongness. And to try and describe precisely how obvious this would be to a psyker, for a psyker the connection between them and the immaterium is an obvious one, and all living beings, again with the exception of the blanks, have some form of connection to the immaterium. This is what in 40k is referred to as the soul, and every non-blank has one. It is often described as a flickering light visible to those with psychic powers, and seeing this flame to them is commonplace, it is utterly normal and usual, it is a part of every single person they meet. Every human has a slightly different flame and so on and so on. 
And so to see a psychic blank would be like if one of us saw a person who had no face, no facial features, no recognisable definitions, just a literal blank. And as you can probably imagine, that would be a wee bit uh, disconcerting. But this uncomfortable feeling is, as mentioned, not unique to psychers. It is very much so far more powerful when it comes to psychers because they can see the blank. But to a normal human, of course, they appear completely normal. There's nothing particularly off about their facial features or anything necessarily. It could be absolutely nothing. Indeed, it could actually be the exact opposite of absolutely nothing. In the case of the Gregor Eisenhorn novels, for example, we have Elizabeth Beckwin, who is described as stunningly beautiful, and yet everybody dislikes her. Unusual, <laughs> to put it mildly. Beautiful people usually do not have the problem of people going, yeah, I don't like you. That's uh, not normally what happens. And yet in her case, not only did people not like her, but she often elicited a vehement dislike, often a violent dislike even. And this is because, whilst they may not be psychers in the traditional sense of the word, all living things have a connection to the immaterium, to the warp, the flickering light thing and all that. And yet, as mentioned, the psychic blank does not. And this means that even a basic human will feel as if there is something wrong with the blank. They will not be able to figure out what it is precisely. They won't be able to put their finger on it, so to say, and they will not be able to articulate precisely what it is that makes them so uncomfortable about them, but they will feel an instinctual dislike of them. And it is important to point out that this is not an intellectual dislike. This is not a position they have arrived at through a lengthy experience or knowing the person or through any habits or physical features or anything else they may possess. We have another case of a blank that is Jürgen from the Commissar Cyphus Kane novels. You can understand why people might not like him, because apparently he smells to such a degree that he could wilt plants merely by his passing. But in the case of Elizabeth Beckwin, described again as an outstanding beauty, that was probably not the issue. Though many blanks do tend to develop uh, less than sociable personalities and habits due to the fact that they repel other humans. So this repulsion is then an entirely instinctual reaction that can, mind you, be overcome by an intellectual reaction. Jürgen, for example, not only became a fond friend of Commissar Cyphus Kane, but his by far most trusted associate, to the point where the Commissar went to considerable length to ensure that Jürgen received a rejuvenation therapy. And in the case of Beckwin, Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn even developed quite the semi-romantic attraction to her. Despite the fact that Gregor Eisenhorn was a low-level psyker, and as such his reaction to her must have been even more extreme. Whilst as again a normal human might look upon her and simply feel a vague sense of dislike or disgust, for Gregor Eisenhorn, merely being near her was not merely disturbing, but on the verge of outright painful. And despite that, he still developed feelings for her. The uh, moral of the story is that even if you are a monstrous, probably alien-engineered abomination to the human race that is anathema to all other life in the universe, there is still love. <laughs> See? 40 k isn't all that grimdark. It really is all poppies and roses when it comes down to it. Yes, Beckwin did essentially die after an aneurysm and then put in a suspended animation forever and then her body was lost in the warp and then she was cloned and enslaved by Chaos Space Marine stuff, but you know, that is all besides the point that love did find a way until, you know, everything else just shat on that particular way. So, you know, details. Minor 
insignificant details. A far more interesting detail is the fact that blanks occasionally use their powers in different ways. In the case of Jürgen, he does not even know that he is a blank. He simply has a deadening effect on psychic powers that are used near him or towards him. For example, in Cyphus Kane's various run-ins with the Tyranid Hive Mind, he has found Jürgen very useful because he disrupts their synapse network. But he has no idea that he does it, and for the longest period of time, Cyphus Kane also had no clue whatsoever, until he got into his own romantic relationship with an Inquisitor. I'm starting to think that Inquisitors are just really, really horny. The evidence at the very least seems to suggest so. But in the case of Bequin, she can utilize her psychic powers directly. She can guide, boost, and aim her blankness, her deadening field. Uh, granted, she has received far more official training than Jürgen ever has, because in Jürgen's case it was decided that it was more valuable to keep him as a secret, whilst in the case of Bequin, not only was she not kept a secret, Gregor Eisenhorn developed an entire inquisitorial bureau called the Distaff made up of blanks who were trained, in part, by Bequin to use their powers to aid various Inquisitors allied to Greg Eisenhorn. Unfortunately, since this was then an up-and-out open organization, it was eventually targeted by those who were not overly fond of Eisenhorn, and that viewed the Distaff as a threat, leading to the death of the vast majority of the blanks employed within it. It uh, turns out that if you're sitting on an incredibly valuable resource like that, it might be an idea to keep it a secret. And make absolutely no mistake, blanks are unbelievably valuable. Because not only are they rarer than an honest politician, uh, their powers are also very useful in the modern-day Imperium, constantly threatened by various Xenos races which have a nasty habit of utilizing their psychic powers somewhat freely. And then, of course, there's Chaos. Due to the fact that Blanks have no clear connection to the warp, they are also completely and utterly immune to its warping and corrupting effects. In other words, a psychic Blank can never, ever be influenced by chaos. Oh, well, they can, but not in a chaotic fashion. They could be bribed or tortured or threatened into doing something, but we are of course talking about chaotic corruption here rather than, uh, you know, <laughs> good old-fashioned human-based coercion. Blanks are also very useful in hunting down those who are not blanks. And to fully understand the value in that capacity, you need to remember that not only is the Imperium reliant upon the use of psychers for navigation through the warp, for communication across interstellar distances, and as fuel for the Imperial Throne, making them an absolutely vital part of the Imperium, they can also be one of the greatest threats towards that very same Imperium. Even a basic, low-level Psyker is in possession of powers that a regular human could not possibly hope to match. And such an individual could do quite a lot of damage. But these are usually things that local law enforcement and authorities are able to handle. Round them up and gather them ready to be shipped off to Terra on one of the infamous black ships. But what if a Psyker appears that is so powerful that local authorities are not able to deal with them? This is a fairly rare occurrence, but it does happen. And in fact, on some occasions, Psykers have appeared that are so powerful that they become threats not merely to a single planet, but entire planetary systems or even sectors. There have been occasions of psychers so powerful that they are able to puppeteer every single last man, woman, and child on entire hive worlds. Billions, if not trillions of people, all enslaved to the psychic will of a single individual. 
It is even suspected that a rapid rise in psychers was one of the reasons why the golden age of humanity was brought crashing to an end, leading to the Dark Age. Now, of course, this is on the extreme end of the spectrum, and most psychers with the Olympiarium will never present quite such a conundrum, but those that do need to be dealt with swiftly and preferably as one-sidedly as possible. And since psychic blanks are quite literally the only weapon in existence capable of neutralizing or at the very least dampening their powers, yeah, pretty damn useful, everything considered. But then again, there's also the question of power. Whereas a blank may be able to merely dilute psychic powers or only affect them in a certain area, or if trained, direct them to a degree, we also mentioned the other classification, Pariah. This is a much, much stronger version of a psychic blank, in whom the Pariah gene is not latent, but dominant. And whilst there may be one or two psychic blanks amongst an entire planet's population every generation, you'd be lucky to have even a single pariah in the entire population. And that is not just merely because of their innate rarity, but also due to their effect upon regular humans. Being near a blank is uncomfortable, unnerving, annoying, and may elicit a rather extreme reaction if that presence lingers. But for a pariah, that reaction is increased by a hundred times. For a psyker to even be in proximity to a pariah is not merely uncomfortable or unsettling, it is physically painful. It would be comparable to setting off a flashbang right next to somebody's head. All of their usual senses would simply just be blown out in an explosion of pain and white-hot light. And for a human, the usual reaction to a pariah is instantaneous and overwhelming loathing. To the point where if a mother bore a child with the pariah gene fully functional, she might simply toss the baby out the window. That's the kind of extremity of emotion we're talking about here. And so, not only are they rare, but the odds of them surviving to the point where they can actually be discovered <laughs> not good. Not good at all. And even if a pariah was to survive long enough to be discovered by the Imperium, and more importantly, to be discovered by an arm of the Imperium sympathetic to their plight, their lives would not necessarily get all that much better, as the only Imperial organization that utilizes the true pariahs is the Calexus Temple of Assassins an order that even within the Officio Assassinorum is viewed with considerable distrust. This, by the way, is also where we run into a bit of a canon conflict, because in some sources, the Sisters of Silence are also described as pariahs, but the source material of the Sisters of Silence does not seem to back this up. For example, we have occasions where the sisters are engaged in full-blown conversations with people outside of their orders. At literal conversations, I mean, where they use translators, those who have not yet taken the full vows to speak to other people whilst communicating with their own sisters via sign language. This would literally be impossible if they were true pariahs. The sheer level of disgust that they would instill in quite literally anyone would mean that even being in the same room with such a person would be enough to turn their stomachs. And since the Sisters of Silence do not have access to the Animus Speculum, a tool used by the Calexus Assassins to dampen or at the very least reduce this effect to some degree, I think it is fair to assume that the Sisters of Silence, whilst they may have true pariahs in their ranks, they are not made up exclusively of pariahs. And speaking of the Calexus Temple and the Animus Speculum, we'll be doing a full video on the various Officio Assassinorum temples soon, 
quote unquote. But for now, the bare bone basics. For psychers, they often have specialized tools to focus their psychic energies or to keep them under control. A librarian psychic hood, for example, is meant both to focus his energy and to make sure that he can remain in control of the considerable psychic forces he is able to unleash. In other cases, the psychist may have a particular focus, a staff, a religious icon, or even something that is just an item of personal importance to them, which helps them guide and control their powers. And this doesn't have to be in a violent or overly impressive manner, it could simply be something like sending a message, and a particular astropath has a ritual when doing so, or utilizes his own specific alphabet made up of meanings, words, syllables, smells, pictures, etc. that he uses to communicate. The point is, in the case of psychers, they have these things to harness and use their powers, or at the very least, to make it easier to do so. The animus speculum is such an item, but for pariahs. And it functions in much the same way, although also in the exact opposite fashion. Whereas in the case of a regular human or a psyker, they have their souls, and they can use that power to draw upon the immaterium, in the case of a Calexus assassin, it instead uses the soullessness, the void where the soul should be, as a vacuum, drawing in an enemy psyker's power, focusing it, and then firing it straight back at them, in a discharge of considerable energy. Alternatively, the very soulless nature of the Calexus assassin can also be used as a weapon in and of itself. The enemy psyker does not have to actually unleash any of his power for the Calexus assassin to draw that very energy right out of him and then fire it straight back at him. This of course makes it a powerful weapon, but it also has a secondary function. Not only can the speculum be utilized as a weapon, it can also be used to absorb or neutralize, diffuse perhaps is a better word, some of the pariah's own power. His aura of emptiness, the very thing that makes people react so violently and drastically towards the pariah. It will reduce it to the level of mere unease, an uncomfortable feeling, a vague dislike perhaps, but nothing even close to comparable to the sheer overwhelming dread and distaste that exposure to the full aura of a pariah would instill in any living being, even more so to those uh, psychically active like the Eldar. And speaking of the pointy little bastards, We've talked at length now about what a blank or prior is, but we have not yet touched upon the why. Why do they exist? And how do they exist? Or perhaps even more importantly, who made them exist? Because an entity like a blank, or even more so a prior, is not a natural phenomenon. In fact, they appear to only be born naturally within the human race. Almost as if somebody engineered it specifically to only affect us. Now who would benefit from such a thing? Hmm. Well, indeed there are several that would potentially benefit, but the lead theory is probably the Necrons. The Necrons despise chaos, the warp the Immaterium, and anything and everything that has to do with it, to the point where they have invested a considerable deal of time and resources into countering its effects. They have constructed pylons whose sole purpose is to block out chaos, to cancel out its effect, and to rid the material universe of it. They once even had a plan to cover the entire galaxy in these pylons, specifically to cut off the galaxy from the warp and the imperium in total. They certainly would have a lot of 
reason to artificially create a genome in a small and at that point insignificant race that could not possibly pose any kind of a threat whatsoever to the then mighty Necronteer Empire. They certainly would have the motive, and they probably would have the means as well. They did, after all, get all buddy-buddy with a race of godlike interstellar space vampires capable of devouring stars. And there is also the Necron Pariah Warriors to take into consideration. It seems almost a little bit too convenient the Necrons would have the technology to create these cybernetic warriors from captured pariahs, human pariahs, and turn them into undying, loyal warriors for the Necron cause, unless they already knew that they'd be needing that kind of technology. Though, to be fair, although I kind of like this theory myself, it does seem to be a lot less plausible now these days that the Necron have received quite the makeover, and the pariahs have simply just pff, disappeared. And along with them, I assume, the idea that they utilise human blanks. Suggesting that maybe, just maybe, whilst this sounded plausible, it might not actually be it. Another idea is, of course, that this is merely just evolution, development, and in this case, a response to a very specific crisis. The golden age of humanity it was sent crashing down into burning ruins for many reasons, but the sudden appearance of psychers in vast quantities was absolutely one of those reasons. And in a universe where red ones really do go faster, it would not be entirely impossible to suggest that the psychic blanks were a reaction to this, a subconscious wish on behalf of humanity to develop some sort of defence against psychers. And of course, it's also possible that they simply just appeared eventually. Hell, they might have been around for a very long time. Their existence may even predate the Psychers themselves, but we never really had the frame of reference or the technology to recognise them as what they were. They may simply have been people who were generally considered to be disturbing, disgusting, or dangerous. Human history does have quite a few examples of people who were considered less than pleasant after all. Regardless of what the truth may be, the fact is that they do exist in the modern day Imperium, and initially, upon discovering this fact, it threw the Imperium into quite a bit of a panic. During the early days of the Crusade, when the existence of blanks on a larger scale was made known, there was quite a bit of pushback and also rampant enthusiasm from various branches of the Imperial governance. The Adeptus Mechanicus immediately viewed this as an opportunity, and began experimenting with the Pariah Gene, attempting to replicate it, recreate it, control it, or even possibly simply just instill it in those who did not previously have it. They also tried to make specific implements, weapons, and gear to utilise this gene more effectively. And to some degree, they were successful. They developed the Animus Speculum, a vital tool for the Collector's Assassins. They also managed to at the very least replicate the prior gene to some extent via cloning technology. And then of course there are the Sisters of Silence. Back in the day of the Great Crusade, they were a far more overt and clear Imperial organisation, acting as the military arm of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, and even being given official titles and remit within the Imperium as the Departmento Investigas where their role was to investigate reports of rogue psychers, hunt them down, capture them, or if necessary, kill them. They were also the ones operating the Black Ships, transporting psychers back to Terra for interrogation and classification. 
Their role, however, became far more nebulous as time passed, until they were eventually outright disbanded at one point, although they were later brought back into official service, then disbanded again and a little bit back and forth for a while, until finally they are now once again a part of the Imperium, although in a somewhat ill-defined role, shall we say. They operate almost in the same capacity as the Custodes, in that they do something for the Imperium. The Imperium is aware of the fact that they do something and value the fact that they are doing something, but they don't necessarily want to be overly prescriptive in what they can and cannot do. And in all due reality, the only true authority they ever really recognised was that of the Emperor and those that he placed in power. And it was also due to this direct patronage from the God Emperor that they were able to continue to operate as an official branch of the Imperium, whereas the Adeptus Mechanicus had to end their experimentation with the Pariah Gene at least officially. It turns out that the high and mighty powers that be within the Imperium, such as the Navis Nobilite, for example, had a lot of problem with the Adeptus Mechanicus officially experimenting with recreating a gene that literally exists to cause psychers no end of suffering, pain, misfortune, and of course also cut them off from the war the very thing that gave them all of their power, privilege and wealth in the first place. Small wonder that they would go to considerable lengths to ensure that nobody could really toy around with this nonsense. And the Adeptus Mechanicus, being ever loyal servants of the Imperium, of course, acquiesced to the wishes of the High Lords of Terror, and ended all experimentation, executing any and all subjects, burning the research material, and putting a stop to any further programs. Officially. <laughs> the Adeptus Mechanicus are no strangers to running the occasional undercover ops here and there, and the Imperium, to be fair, is not exactly a stranger to turning a blind eye either, when the Adeptus Mechanicus prove that what they're working on can be useful. And hey, it's a big Imperium, plenty of places to hide a couple minor experiments. I mean, for fuck's sake, a certain Magos managed to not only recreate, but improve upon the Emperor's work with the Space Marines, and then secretly produce millions of them. All without anyone being the wiser, so I'm sure that a little bit of prior gene therapy could easily have gone unnoticed. And on that note, Humanity is not the only species in the galaxy with blanks. It is only the single species that has blanks occurring naturally. And of course, that is a rather important distinction to make. Though, when the other races create a blank, it is not necessarily intentionally either. The Eldar, for example, have a blank of their very own, despite the fact that the very idea of a blank is beyond abhorrent to them. A soulless creature is anathema to them, their very way of thinking. Indeed, they put so much value in the soul, and not surprisingly, considering who's waiting for them after they die, that they utilize a special technology used to capture the soul upon the moment of the Eldar's death, and then integrate it into a vast network. But in the case of the Eldar Blank, a type of harlequin known as a solitaire, they are psychic blanks. They do not possess a soul. Which is interesting because, well, they are still alive, of course, and since they are not a natural blank, it is unclear precisely how they became to be in this way. Although, considering the deity they worship, the Harlequin Laughing God, I imagine that some kind of trick was at play. And the question of whether or not the Eldar surrendered his soul willingly or not is probably a question best left unanswered. 
And so, we come to the end of yet another 40k lore video. Hopefully this has given you a bit more of an insight in the untouchable, the pariahs, the blanks of the 41st millennium, and a sneak mention or two of a couple characters we will be seeing in the upcoming Inquisitor TV show, Gregor Eisenhorn being one, and Elizabeth Beckwin being the other. Elizabeth, written with an A, because... Special. <laughs> Only reason I can come up with, really. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, have a good day.